Hey you guys, it's your girl Amaya Moore and I'm back here with another video. It's been so long. I'm sorry. It's really been like almost a year. A lot was going on in my life. A lot has happened. Um, I did finish nursing school. I graduated nursing school. I passed my NCLEX, obviously. That is basically what this video is going to all be about. I honestly don't want to talk too, too much about like where I've been, what was going on, why I wasn't on YouTube, because I do have my reasons. It was a lot going on and it was overwhelming trying to produce content and not only recording, but then editing. Like it really was a lot. So I just hit a wall and I'm really sorry because I feel like so many times I would say on here on my channel, like I'm gonna put out a video, I'm gonna be serious this time, I'm gonna be consistent this time. And it like didn't happen. And I really just like am now at a point in my life where I actually feel free. Like I feel like I have time. I feel like I can breathe. I don't have so many commitments and things that I'm prioritizing, you know, like I actually have a second. Cause I really have so much I want to give you guys. You know, I always am like big on when I put out a video there, I, I, I want it to be something that could like really help people and be useful, not just like putting out bullcrap just for the sake of having a video. So I will get into all that updates in a whole other video, but this video is going to be primarily focused on me passing the NCLEX, what I did to prepare for the NCLEX, the actual time of taking the NCLEX, and after the NCLEX, all right? So if you're interested, if you're taking the NCLEX, if it's coming up, if you're in nursing school and you just wanna know about it, stay tuned my primary tools to study for the NCLEX were Mark K and UWorld I am sure like everyone has heard of that that's pretty much what a lot of people use I watched YouTube and was seeing what other people were using and that's what they were using and lo and behold it's what I used and it worked for me I really do want to specifically tell you guys though in my nursing program we were required to purchase Kaplan and the reason why I'm about to talk about Kaplan really quick before I keep going on about Mark and UWorld is because when it came time for me to take my NCLEX, I believe that it was the knowledge and preparation that I had from a whole bunch of different sources that helped me for that one test. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know which specific source did it. Um, I know which sources I liked the best, but when it came time for that test, all the knowledge that I had gained from all these resources had to have been what helped me. So I do want to still include that my school required us to purchase Kaplan. Throughout the entire semester, we were given like a exam each week that was based on the different systems, like different nursing specialties. So we had a maternity exam, a med surge exam, a peds exam, a mental health exam, farm exam, and et cetera. So we had one exam. Oh no, we were given two exams each week. So two different specialties, like each week we were given an exam on. So for that whole week, you were able to like review everything from previous semesters and just like make sure you were ready for this exam. That was part of my preparation. And then we had to um, do a Kaplan three day review course. And it was like an online virtual course in which you're doing practice questions with the people who own Kaplan and learning all these test taking strategies and just like all that. We were required to do all of the Q trainers. So I did Q trainers one through seven on Kaplan and i remediated every single one like i mean the q trainers get harder and harder as they go and with each q trainer there's more questions you're given and i studied and remediated every single question in each q trainer and i want to emphasize that because i feel like that could have been that could have contributed to like my success on nclex like i really did take kaplan seriously when my school required it we even had homework assignments in which it was like you have to do 200 QBank questions a week. I did more than half of Kaplan's QBank. Every time I did QBank questions, I always remediated and made sure I reviewed each question, understood why I was wrong, understood why I was right. My school also required us to take the Kaplan CAT exam, which so if you don't know, it's basically like a computerized adaptive test, just like the NCLEX, set up just like the NCLEX in which they're giving you questions that's based on how you're doing and you the, the test will stop at a certain point i got um the green light each time i had to take it so i feel like that's also important to include but when it came time for the nclex i personally did not want to study kaplan anymore even though i had paid for kaplan 
had Kaplan, I had access to Kaplan, I was like so interested in like other people's tips that they use for studying. And I was just like, when people would say that Kaplan's rationales are, it is true. Like Kaplan's rationales are horrible. Kaplan just wasn't it for me. My school did not stop us from using other sources, but they required us to purchase everything with Kaplan. And I personally, over time, I just feel like it became a waste of money. Also, my school had required us to create a binder. So this is my NCLEX RM binder. I was very determined with this binder. We had to make it throughout the semester. We got points for it and everything. And this is just my binder. Like I separated it by different sections, like P's, all that. Any little notes I was taking based off my question in QBank remediation in Kaplan, I would write it in here. But when it came time to actually study and when I actually crumbled down and was like, okay, I need to study for this NCLEX. I did not open this. I tried so, 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 so hard. I kept trying to find a reason for why I needed to use this binder. Maybe because I just thought it was cute, like to be organized and like just opening it, making me feel like I was doing something. But no, did not use it. So fast forward, once everything was sent to New Jersey Board of Nursing and I got my ATT, I was so excited. I got my ATT and didn't see any availabilities until the end of August and I was like what like I do not want to take my test all the way in August that's too far it's too much I I honestly work good under pressure and I was just like that is just too far like I cannot wait that long it's not gonna make me feel like I have anything to work for it's just too far but I booked it I remember I was trying to find a, the place that was 20 minutes away from my house but I ended up booking a, a point testing date all the way someplace that was an hour away from my house just so that I could get at an earlier time and that was August 6th and I remember I didn't even want that date because I knew my birthday was August 2nd and I was like I want to be an RM before my 22nd birthday like that was my goal pretty much I was just like it's whatever I'm just gonna book August 6th because there's no other option I knew I was going on vacation from July 3rd to the 8th so I remember like prior to my vacation I was like I'm gonna go on a crazy study cram and then on my vacation i have the uworld app and i'll just be doing questions sometimes while i'm on vacation and then i'll come back and do another intense study and then i'll take my test a couple days passed i just was studying and i found a test date for july 12th and when i got july 12th i was like wow i'm coming back from my vacation july 8th which means i need to go crazy before my vacation so that i don't have that much pressure on me on my vacation so that when i come back i'm pretty much ready to take this test july 12th was set in stone all right, so the way I decided to study, I had Mark K and UWorld. Those are my primary things. The binder, Kaplan, everything literally went out the window. Stop thinking about them. Stop touching it. I had reviewed Mark K three times in total before I took the NCLEX. I listened to Mark K while I was in school preparing for my finals. I listened to Mark K when I was studying for the NCLEX. And I listened to it for a third time. This third time is when I like sat and made flashcards about it. So anything that Mark K was talking about that I felt was super important, I just like made flashcards. All type stuff that like about chest tubes, things that I personally felt like were like hot spot topics for me that I really wanted to go over, dysrhythmias. I made sure I took note of that from Mark K. One day I like set aside a whole week, a whole six days because there's 12 lectures. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna listen to two lectures a day. I would wake up every single morning, I'd listen to two lectures a day, and then I was like, okay, once I'm done with Mark K and I've reviewed it, this is my third time listening to him. After I did that, I was like, I'm gonna purchase you world. I decided to purchase the 60 day, and with that, it came with one self-assessment. I didn't want to take it because I wanted to take it when I was closer to the NCLEX so I'd have like a idea of what I was gonna be, you know, doing, of how I was gonna do. So with you world, you're really not able I'm not gonna like show you guys questions or anything, but basically, let me see my performance and overall usage. I use 59% of the QBank. So the total amount of questions you could see there, and I used 1,288. And my average was 75% out of all that I did. The way I used UWorld was I tried to do like 75 to 100 questions a day, some days would be 50. I was setting this like a goal, you know, I've seen people on YouTube doing 150, 200 questions a day, 
And I'm like, I'm not doing enough. Like, and I would compare myself to them and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do well. I'm not doing enough questions. Like they're going, they're going through all these questions and then they're telling me they're reading the rationale. Like I am reading the rationale thoroughly as well. And I am struggling to get through 75 questions a day. So I started comparing myself to other people's NCLEX journeys and how many UR questions they were doing, which I just want to put out there, please. If there's anything that you do in life, do not compare your NCLEX journey and the way you prepare to anyone else's because I promise you what works for one person may not work for the next and what you are doing you need to just do what's best for you and do not doubt that what you're doing isn't good enough and it just makes the journey 10 times more stressful I'm telling you I was there I'm an overthinker I tend to get extremely anxious and I just am constantly not feeling like I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing you know, so when I see that there's people who are doing more, I'm like, maybe I should be doing more. But like, you really just have to trust yourself. So like I said, when I first started UWorld, I was doing it by section, like basic care and comfort, assignment delegation, postpartum, antepartum, things like that. And once I kind of started feeling like I was getting a good gist of it all, then I started doing like focusing on the main areas that I feel was most important for NCLEX, such as leadership and management, prioritization safety and infection i say to you personally if you cannot get through all the u world questions which you do not have to i use 59 percent of my cubing and pass the nclex in 75 questions should you take the ones that you do do in the cubing very seriously yes and you should read the rationale thoroughly and make sure you understand it but i wouldn't say you have to do it all and if you really can't do it all and you're on a crunch of time I'd say at least do leadership and management and do all the prioritization questions. I probably had like 10 prioritization questions left, all of the safety and infection control questions and all of the basic care and comfort questions. And then I would do like neuro one day, endocrine one day, cardiovascular one day, respiratory one day. I made sure I finished the parts of the QBank that were on subjects that were either my weakest areas or subjects that I felt like the NCLEX was really gonna test me on. So. All to say, you don't have to finish the Q-Bank. Don't let anyone get in your head. Some days I would end up doing 50. You know, I, I just couldn't reach the goal that people was doing, doing 150, 200, and sitting there reading each rationale. Like, I still didn't want that NCLEX journey to feel like nursing school, which I was taking up my whole entire day. And there were times, and I'm not even gonna lie, I would stop at six o'clock. I'd start at eight in the morning, end at six at night. I was going hard because sometimes I'd be like, no, I have to get this many questions done today. Like, there, it's not even optional. I have to finish this many questions today. Like, I would refuse to go to sleep. I wouldn't even be able to lay my head down if I didn't finish what my goal was. Once I felt like the time was getting closer, I would start randomizing my questions. So I wasn't just doing it by section. I would just do it randomly. But once I was doing them randomly and I was doing pretty well on those, um... Then I just started like, I'm like, okay, my what's your weak areas? Like, let's do some more prioritization, let's do some more leadership, let's do some more management, whatever. Fundamentals, all that. On UWorld, I will say that I definitely took advantage of the flashcards and notebook section. I cannot show you guys for privacy purposes, but like, I definitely, after a while, I stopped having like my own separate doc open and I stopped using a notebook. Whenever I got a question wrong, I just make note of it on in the question because it allows you to do that and i would just in the pictures and the deep rationales that you all has you could take the picture and form it into a flash card i did that a lot that was my study mechanism so while i was on vacation times when i didn't want to actually sit there and do questions i would just read through the flashcards on my app it was extremely helpful for me like i said i took usage of the notebook section on you world because i like for all of my studying materials and everything i do to just be in one section and in one app and one resource because it keeps me feeling organized and keeps me feeling good so that helped a lot after that while i was on vacation i knew that my test was coming up july 12th mind you my vacation was ending july 8th i remember speaking to my mom i was just like oh, like she was like you feel like you're ready i think july 12th is a little too soon maybe you should give yourself a little more time and i'm like i let it get into my head i'm like yeah maybe i should give myself a little more time like go home and just like be able to recoup from vacation I ended up changing my date and found July 15th. No, 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 July 19th, July 19th. I found July 19th and I'm like, ah, oh, this is a whole week after the date I originally planned. But I just stuck with that. So whatever, I'd rather have more time than not enough time. Got from vacation, studying, doing more studying, 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 studying. But I won't lie, this kind of studying started to feel annoying. 
like before it's not that it was annoying that it was annoying but like I felt like I needed to do it once I came back from vacation the studying I was doing was just like oh my god I'm still here I started getting that internal feeling that feeling I was just like Amaya enough is enough it's done it's nothing else to study just go take the test like I started feeling like that I took the self-assessment on UWorld. I had got very high chance of passing. I think I got like a, in the, like a, I got a really good score on it. Like I would say I got like an 80% or something. And I think it's, I think it's a hundred questions. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's it. I just felt it in my heart. I remember it was a Thursday and I was like, I want to take the test tomorrow. I want to take the test tomorrow. So I went on to the ATT thing. Mind you, I feel like this is like what, my fourth time changing my test date. I saw a date for July 15th, which was the next day. No, no, I'm saying tomorrow. No, no, no. This was two days before I chose the date. So I found a date that I wanted and it was in the area that was an hour away. I'm like, oh, I want to take it, but I don't want to go that far. I'm like, I just don't. So I'm like, whatever. I'm just keep July 19th. A couple hours later, I go home and I, when I tell you, it's not even funny. This wave came over me. I was like, I gotta go check and see if the date is available. I went in July 15th for 8 a.m. at the place that was 20 minutes away from my house, all of a sudden was available. Literally a couple hours prior, it was not available. Nothing was available in July besides July 19th that I had already had booked. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is God. I think God wants me to take it July 15th because I was checking it all day and the date wasn't available. Now all of a sudden it's available. So I took it. The day before my NCLEX, I did study a little bit. Um, I didn't study that that hard because I just felt it in my heart that I was ready and I was just kind of getting annoyed from studying. I remember I actually tried to study and like I was like, I'm just going to study in the morning. And then like I just stopped. I just closed the book and I had to take a nap and I felt so guilty. I'm like, oh, my test is tomorrow. Am I ready? I'm trying to do more Cubane questions because remember, I had in my head that I needed to do more of the cubing in order to be successful so i'm just like oh, i don't feel ready then i'm like i do feel ready so i just went to sleep got myself together the next morning i go take the nclex very high tech security i remember they were like looking through my glasses to make sure they were good glasses every time you come in and out you got to scan your hand they pat you down like it's it's so nerve-wracking the morning of that i did not eat breakfast couldn't eat had no appetite couldn't sleep didn't really drink any water in the morning because i didn't want to have to keep getting up to pee i remember i went into there into the nclex <laughs> it's like in you're in this cubicle there was a camera looking right at me at the top they told me i could put on those noise canceling headphones i put the noise canceling headphones on i put no i had earplugs in that they gave me and i put the noise canceling headphones on like i don't know i just that's how I felt. So I was sitting in there and I remember I just was like, press start. And honestly, people say that UWorld setup looks just like that. I actually feel like the Kaplan Cat format looks more like the way the NCLEX looks. I remember I pressed start and I was just like, this is it. Like, this is the moment. This is it. This is it. Times when I was getting discouraged, I'm like, it's nothing to be discouraged by anymore. This is the moment. This is the make or break. This is gonna finally be it, Amaya. Like, you're done. Like, let's just go. So I'm just going. I'm like, okay. First couple questions, fairly easy to me at least. They were very simple. Not much thought put into it. So much to the point where I'm like, why is this the question? But just move on. Do it. As I was doing it, I felt like I wasn't getting hard questions. I felt like I did get a lot of select all that applied, but then again, I don't. And I really can't recall much because my brain was in so many different places that I can't even sit here and tell you exactly how my test went. But I remember saying, this question isn't hard enough. Like, why am I getting these questions? This seems like it's not easy. I mean, hard. Or sometimes I feel like I get a question wrong, then the next question will come. And I'm like, this is an easier question. I must have got that wrong. And just constantly doubting myself throughout the test. It wasn't until like midway end of the test that I finally stopped overthinking and overanalyzing everything. And I was just like, oh my, just take the test. Take the test. Just take the darn test. <laughs> Stop trying to think about whether it's hard or whether it's an easy question. Because I watched so many videos prior and I heard people saying like, the harder it gets, the better you're doing. The more select thought applies, the better you're doing. I swear, I think all of it is like honestly just coincidental or personalized experiences literally just go in here and take the test 
Don't try to analyze whether you're getting the easy question or a hard question. Just answer the question as presented to you and move on. I felt like I was getting everything wrong. Like when they say that you feel like you're getting everything wrong, it is true. You just feel like defeated. Like everything feels like, what is this? And it's not that I was seeing stuff that I had never seen before. It's just that the way they was wording it, I'm like, what? I was trying to use some Mark K tips for the prioritization. There's so many things I did not see on my NCLEX. That's why people say just study everything and don't go off someone's experience. I studied dysrhythmia so deep and so hard and did not see one dysrhythmia. I barely even feel like I even saw something about the heart. Like, it's just like you study all this thing, these things and you go so hard and you, you're repairing. You don't even know what you're going to get and whatever you get, you're like, dag, I didn't even study that or dag, I studied this and it wasn't even on my test. That's just the way it goes. And you just kind of got to accept it for what it is, kind of. But don't let what somebody told you they didn't have make you think that you might not have it. Because you may. I got one calculation question, which I didn't expect because I heard a lot of people saying they wouldn't get any. They didn't get any. But I did get one. So I did use my little notepad. And I felt like my answer was wrong. But whatever. I felt like everything was wrong. But that's me. That's just me. And that's just the way my brain thinks. And I was just doubting myself. And I remember I... Two hours had passed. I had got to this. I remember when I got to the 74th question, I'm like, oh my God, it could possibly end here. I was like, but I'm doing so bad. I already know this thing, but I keep going. I got to question 75. I answered it. The test goes, would you like a break? I'm like, what? <laughs> Mind you, I was actually told that you may get a break. They're going to offer you a break when you've already been testing for two hours. So I'm like, all right, I'm sure my test isn't over because if my test was over. Why would they ask me to take a break? Fine. I'm just gonna go and take a break. I went to the bathroom. I'm talking to myself. I'm like, my, it's all right. Like Marquez said, keep going. You're still in the game. It's all right. If they give you more questions, just be ready for it. You're still in the game. You got it. You are gonna go back. You are gonna have to use the bathroom real quick. You are gonna go back and you good. You good, my. You got this. I go back. I press end break. Tell me why it says your test is complete. I was like, wait, why did it give me a break at question seventy five if the test was over? Why didn't it just tell me the test was over and I could have left? Right then and there, I felt defeated. Defeated. I'm like, I did so bad. I did so bad. Ain't no way. Ain't no darn way I just passed that test at 75 questions. There's a survey that you're actually required to do. And then there's the next generation, like 15 voluntary questions. I didn't do them. The guy came to me. He's like, your test is over. You don't have to do these if you don't want. I'm like, yeah, I'm not. I, I was tired. I was stressed. I wanted to leave that building so fast. I did the little survey to like five questions that was like asking you about your time, your experience. And I left. I left. I sat in my car. Sat there. I did the Pearson V trick and got the good pop up. But then I'm like, wait, but I have to wait until they send me the email saying like, we've gotten your test to 7 30. So I sat there and waited. I got the email. And when I did it, I did my, I used my actual credit card. I didn't want to use like a fake card. Cause then I'm like, what if I use a fake card and it doesn't go through because it's a fake card. So I just wanted to get a kind of accurate idea, but I waited until I got the email. I did the pop up again. I got the good pop up. All right. I drove 25 minutes home, waited an hour, did the pop up trick again, got the good pop up. Took a nap for like three hours. Got the good pop up. Like I promise you, I tried the pop up trick so many times. It's actually extra. It's so extra thinking back because I was so in my head. Like I was telling my mom, my Mima, and you know, my Mima. You know, when I walked in the house, she said to me, "She's like, you passed." I'm like, Mima, you don't know that. You don't know that. She's like, No, something just came over me and told me you passed. And I'm like, Okay. I was talking to my mom. She she was kind of bobbing off my energy of not being sure. So she didn't know which way to go. I just was like, look, y'all, I didn't know what we could do. The test is there. It's done. It's nothing I could do. And that's the mindset I had to have for those 48 hours. I'm like, it's nothing I could do. The test is over. I can't go change anything. What it is is what it is. I'm not about to pick up a book and study because what if I did pass? I just got to wait. I remember I had a drink. I made me a drink. I was like, I need to get this off my mind. I need to. That, that weekend... Because it was a Friday that I took it. That Saturday, I went to a party. Like, I was out. I was just, you know, doing my thing because I didn't want to think about it. Sunday morning came, and I know that I submitted my test results around, like, I, sub I was done with my test around, like, 10-something on Friday. So, literally, at around that same time on Sunday, I went and I looked, and it said, test results available. And I... 
panicking. Oh, ew, my elbow's cracking. I saw that it said pass. And don't get me wrong, when I was getting those good pop-ups, it did relieve anxiety. I'm like, everyone says this pop-up works. So I did kind of have a feeling I was going to pass. But I also was like, it's too good to be true because I really felt so bad about the exam. But then when I took it and I saw and I paid the $8 and it said that I passed, I just was like, oh my God, it's over. There's nothing that beats that moment when you just are like it's over like I could actually cry about it right now because it's like so much work that like I went through and so much toughness I went through and stress and stress I put on myself and ways I doubted myself and how I just was so scared and constantly doubting my abilities you know even when I finished um school the exit exam I on the Kaplan exit exam I got a 98% chance to pass the NCLEX on the ATI final I got a 99% chance to pass the NCLEX but like those were never good enough for me so it's like to know that I actually finally did pass the NCLEX was just like a dream come true I'm so happy I'm an RN all my things are official I got my license in the mail everything's all done so right now I'm just kind of in the process of applying for jobs and I definitely want to keep you guys in tune on that journey how that goes and yeah I'm just applying for jobs you know some people did have jobs like set in stone when they graduated so that once they take the NCLEX they start but I didn't I didn't want to have the pressure of oh this is your start date as long as you pass the NCLEX within 60 days or something I didn't want the pressure just taking it day by day I've been applying you know and just waiting waiting things out I'm not stressed anymore I'm not making the job search process stressful I already stressed so much with that NCLEX I'm done. I'm RN, all right? So what I just want to tell you guys is if you're in nursing school, work hard. Work hard. Study as much as you can. For the NCLEX, you will feel like you are you don't know what you're doing. You may feel like you see things that you don't know. You may feel like you see things that are super easy. Don't psych yourself out. Don't overanalyze it. Don't let what other people went through decide how your journey is going to go just embrace your own journey and your own experience of the NCLEX and don't try to let what other people went through make you doubt whether you did good or bad just put your best foot forward and study as much as you can make sure you understand everything you're studying I did not use any other resources outside of what I told you guys um oh I did sometimes I, sh I should mention this I did at times go on YouTube or simple nursing and watch simple nursing for little areas that I wanted like to make sure I was good on like this rhythmia's chest tubes things like that things that like safety and infection control PPE making sure I knew that stuff I did watch little YouTube videos but other than that that was it you got this like I promise you and it's like it's so I know it's so much easier said than done because I've watched videos in which people were saying like it's going to be okay but nothing could convince me that I was going to be okay nothing could convince me that I was going to pass but like it is true you really have to let go and let God like I swear as I was driving to the end class I was just playing gospel music the whole morning like I just wanted God into me like please God just like be there and like if you put the work in and do everything you have to do will work and if you do not pass the NCLEX it is okay you're gonna take it again and I know that even that's even hard to take because when people were saying that to me I'm like but I don't want to take it again like what do you think I want to go through this journey again so I get it no one really wants to hear that like let's be real no one wants to hear you can always just take it again but it is true you can and if you don't pass in 75 it's okay because I did not have expectations that I was going to pass in 75 questions even when it shut off at 75, I didn't believe that I just ended in 75 questions. I was like, ain't no way. I was ready for more. Like, I was ready. Because like I said, the more you stay in the test and the more questions they're giving you, it means that the you're showing the test that you got it. You got enough to keep going. Don't get discouraged when you start getting more questions. And if you max out, so what? Because your name on that board of nursing it's gonna say RN next to it. It ain't gonna say how many questions you passed in. It's not gonna say nothing like that. It is going to put your name RN and you'll be right next to another person with the name that says RN and it don't matter how y'all pass, but you passed. And that's what's important. And I just want you guys to know that. So I hope that was just encouraging for everyone. You know, I really am so happy I'm done. I'm done with school. I do wanna make some videos, future videos on like updates, house, if there's anything you guys wanna know about school, like 
that I went through, my exit exams that I took. If you want me to talk about those, anything that you want, let me know. Comment below. I will say comment below more because I'm, I'm really bad with responding to DMs. Simply because when I get DMs from people on YouTube who say they found me on YouTube, it goes into my hidden requests. It doesn't come into my regular DM section. So a lot of times I don't see it. I don't want anyone to think I'm ignoring them. There's been times where I've gone to my hidden requests and saw that someone DM me like four months ago and I'm like, oh my God, I feel so bad. But it's like, it's really not intentional. And I really want you guys to know like it's not intentional at all. I hope I didn't leave anything out. If you have any questions on any specific parts of my journey in preparing for the NCLEX, like let me know because I could have possibly like skipped some things unintentionally. Um, like I said, <laughs> it was such a dramatic experience. A lot of it is like a blur to me, honestly. Like no funny, it's just kind of a blur. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I helped you. And like I said, you got it. Like if you're taking the NCLEX, you got it. Like trust in yourself. And the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway, if I could say anything is do not compare yourself to anyone else. And do not compare yourself to anyone else's journey. Cause that's what I did and I wish I didn't, especially seeing what the NCLEX was like you know it was hard but I wouldn't say it was the worst thing in my life even though I felt so doubtful about everything clearly I had to be getting stuff right <laughs> like you know what I'm saying so it comes down to like you like was it that hard or was my mind just like telling me it was you watch so many videos on YouTube that you start to have these expectations but don't let those expectations like take over your mind still go into it kind of as if you know nothing and you're just like going for it you know what i mean i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions let me know i'll be free to answer and i'll see you next time